Welcome, my friends. You're listening to the voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome, my friends, to the voice of the eternal gospel. I'm Pastor Rafael Perez, and I'm inviting you to join us in prayer today. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we're so happy and thankful that we can come to your throne of grace. Amen. For help in time of need, we pray that you be with us as we open your word. May we be blessed and those who are watching be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We've been covering the last few programs a topic which I, we believe that it's going to be, or it's been dividing practically. See, when people charge us, blame us that we are divisive or, no, I think we're trying to unify, unify the, the whole world because. Every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. We, <laughs> you took it out of my, my mouth, brother. The message that God sent for this time. Can you read it? Oh, I'm not Pastor Perberry. Mm-hmm. We'll call it by my heart. But uh-huh. And I saw you another said, angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. Okay. I promise, I promise to you, my dear audience, we are not going to go another study on the seven-day Sabbath. We promise. However, there is a point I want to bring here. If it is, and the word of God is true, okay, because God doesn't lie, we see God was predicting a movement for this end time. Uh, I think it was Pastor Barry in the previous program, he brought Isaiah 58, where the God was going to raise a group of people restoring a bridge. And obviously we've seen the, the bridge. The what broken, was that bridge? It was a broken part in God's okay. law. In God's law. Because today all the commandments are acknowledged. Right. But the fourth commandment has been changed. Right. And so God is calling us back to the biblical Sabbath day of the Fourth commandment. And we saw clearly in the last few programs that that change did not come by Jesus, did not come come by his disciples, but it came through what institution? In in love, with all the respect. Uh, uh, Nobody has to be feeling angry about this or upset. We're just, you know, in love with respect, bringing the facts. the historical facts and the prophetic prophetic facts, right? Yeah. Daniel seven twenty five, the uh, uh, Revelation thirteen. What are you looking for, brother? For you your look in your desk. For in the, your liberty of conscience threatened, because uh, we read it that the uh, change yeah. was made and it's a mark of her power, authority. Yeah, authority to change God's law. Now, 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 if. Uh, we know the enemy. What is that the enemy? Uh, the enemy of God is mainly the devil, right. isn't it? The right. dragon. Right. said so the dragon was wroth. Well, Revelation 17, 12. 12, 7. Yeah, 17, 12. Revelation 12, 17 says, And yeah. the dragon was wroth with the woman uh-huh. with, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the devil is uniting the same way that Jesus is uniting his people in truth, in the spirit, and in truth. The devil trying to counterfeit that unity. Is that the way we should say? We yeah. just, mm-hmm. he, he's, he's making a false unity. The question is, is that unity from what we have been presenting? Again, with all the respect to everybody, is that unity being presented based on God's commandment or an institution commandment? In other words, is the foundation 
of that unity, the Word of God, or is it the Word of Based God and something else? Tradition. Tradition, yeah. Right? Well, obviously, if we want to be sincere to one another and respectful to God's Word, and by the way, I should clear this up too. I should clear this up. We were reading from King James. That, that's the Bible we use. Yeah. Yeah. But I always keep, as you notice, my dear audience, I keep with me here a Catholic version <coughs> published by the Catholic Church. And in, if you read, if we will be reading all those verses that we bring in here from the Catholic version, you, we will see that it is the same thing. So the only difference is on the commentary that they make yeah. uh, and the, the footnotes that they put. But the Bible itself is the same. Right. I just want to clear that up because many, many good people, they say, well, the problem with you guys is you're using those evangelicals Bible. No, the Bible is, is, is one. It's the same. Go ahead, my brother. No, I was just going to say that um, when you're looking at this issue, what we're facing, um, and we, we are using the King James Version Bible. We're not using the evangelical version of the Bible. We're using the King James Version. Uh, yes, that's so therefore, uh, thank you. We're, that's a Protestant version of the Bible, basically, at this Amen. point. Uh, that's right. And as a result of that, that's what we're standing by, and that's what we're using. Amen. And those of you watching also have a uh, King James Version. I know a lot of you do. Mm -hmm. And then some of you may have yes. the new different other versions, but if you really want to get down to explaining scriptures, then please stick with your King James. King James Version Bible is written on a uh, seventh grade level where your new translations that you have are actually a fifth grade level. And then mm -hmm. King James is based on the uh, Textus Receptus, yeah. which is the majority text. Yes. And the other, all the other versions are based on a few errant manuscripts mm -hmm. that weren't accepted right. by Erasmus right. Okay, originally. I think I thank you for the clarification that you have made. So my, going back to my point, because I would like to expand today on the issue of unity versus division. Well, what okay. you're going to have, you're going to have unity and you will have division. Revelation 18 mm -hmm. is going to take us to that issue. Right. Because of the fact what, what we're going to look at, we're going to see that Revelation 18, 1, when it talks about another angel, we need to find out who that angel is. What represents? And, and what does he represent? Right. It, the angel has two aspects. Number one, who is he? Because the earth is lightened with his glory. Mm. That's a very important point. And then, what is the other aspect of the angel? The angel is one hand, we're going to identify who the angel is, mm. but the angel also coming with a message. Mm -hmm. And that message is connected to his glory. And we're going to find that that message is, uh, is a message that's, going to be, that's been already given, mm -hmm. but it's going to be repeated with greater power. Right. So it will, be, it will bring that message like a, a new, you know, we can say a new religious experience, new in the sense that it has been maybe forgotten. Or yes. it's something that needs to be brought to prepare us and all of you up there, all God's people from all the nations, all the tribes, all the people, that, that, that was the reason that I said that it needs to be, uh, it, it, need, it, it will be creating a unity among God's people regardless. So if there is a program, let, let me say this. If there will be a program oh. ever being presented by our uh, by this ministry that everybody should go along with is this one. I mean, every program, I guess, because uh -huh. we're, we're, we're just using the Word of God and everybody should adhere to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. But today, we want to bring how God's people, even from Babylon, God is calling them out to come, so to speak, in line, to be in line, to be translated to heaven. Is, can we uh, go ahead? Yes. Let's go. And Revelation, Major. to give you, to start you off, let's talk about Revelation 18.1 for a moment. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at that. 
In Revelation 18, 1, it says, and I saw another angel come down from heaven. Let's stop at that phrase right there for a minute. Mm -hmm. The angel came down, and John said, I saw another angel. Now, that phraseology sounds familiar. You, you, you've heard that phraseology someplace yeah. before. Where have we heard that phraseology, I saw another angel? Well, chapter 14 of Revelation. Okay, you got it in, sits, you got, you got it in chapter 14. Right. Where it says, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel right. to preach unto the dwell on earth to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Mm -hmm. Now, just before that, now let's connect. What, now we have chapter 14 and chapter 18. That means even from the terminology so far, 18 and 14 somehow will link together. Mm. But before age chapter 14, where did we see another, a similar quote of the a similar phrase, another angel, but then it gives, enough, it gives a little bit more about the scripture of this angel. Look mm. at Revelation 10.1. 10, 1, yes. The Bible says, and I saw another mighty angel mm. come down from heaven. Now, right. Revelation 14 said, I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven. Mm. And Revelation 18 says, I saw another angel come down from heaven. So if we look at Revelation 18, 1, it says, I saw another angel come down from heaven. The last time we saw an angel come down from heaven is in Revelation 10, 10 1. Mm -hmm. And who is the angel that's coming down from heaven in 10, 1 based off the scriptures? Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at, uh, first of all, what is the angel's description in Revelation 10, 1? And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud and a rainbow was upon his head. And his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. Okay, now notice, first of all, so we, we lay in the foundation for what we're going. Notice very carefully, Patrick, it's, what's his face like? Was like the sun. All right, now, let's, according to the Bible, whose face is as the sun? Let's go to Revelation 1, uh, 12 through 16. Let's take a look at that. By the way, we did, uh, bro, already in previous program, uh, uh, some of some of this Bible in verses. Revelation 10. But, but we, we, we just want to, that's right, when we started, when we, when we study, want right. Revelation 10. But we want to try to bring you back into this in order for us to understand better the issue of Revelation 18. Yes, yes, okay. we need to know this, okay. Who's like, the foundation, okay. Yeah. Patrick, can you read it for us? 12 through 16. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like, like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Okay. Uh, so it's been described over there, mm -hmm. a special being, so to speak. And yes. what, what, what we need to do in this program is expand that. Who is that angel? Because And what is his message? And what is his message? Yes. But hold it right there. We'll be right back. Find out what the critics are raving about. Top scholars and theologians from around the country come together to reveal the hidden history of the book of Revelation. With powerful reenactments and incredible visual effects, this 95-minute masterpiece brings to life the book of Revelation like never before. Revelation is no longer a mystery. Get your copy today. Welcome back. Welcome back. Okay, so let's expand yes. on this special angel. All right, Patrick had just read to us that the angel's face was as the what? Sun. Sun. All right, but let's what? go. Whose face is as the sun? Okay, whose yeah. face is as the sun in Revelation 1? Yeah, what oh, does angel represent? Than, what does angel represent? We, we're coming to them. We're coming to them. Oh, coming we're, to we're, we're, we're identifying ah. an angel first. Ah, okay. Revelation 1 is none other than Jesus Christ. None other than okay, Jesus Christ. Let's, okay. let's back that up. With, uh, we need a text. Can you read Matthew 17, 1 and 2 for us? Matthew 17. Okay. Matthew 17. Let, let, let's back it up two. with that side of the yeah, word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's back it all up. Okay, mm -hmm. good, good, good. I hope our, our dear friends out there and brethren will keep notes, taking notes on all this. Matthew 17. Uh-huh, verse 1 and 2. 1 and 2. Do you have it, Patrick? 
Yes. Do you want to read it? You, your English is much better. Matthew 17, 1 and 2 says, After six days Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was as white as the light. Notice whose face was as the sun again? Jesus', Jesus. face was as the sun. So wait a minute. Let's, look at Revela let's compare now. Let's take, we're going to take our, let's take our time and compare. Revelation 18, 1 says what? And I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Mm. We know that God will not, God will not, angels are, we know that angels are created beings. Yeah. And, but this particular angel's glory lightens the whole earth. Mm. God is not using just any angel to lighten the earth with his glory. He's using his own, it is the only, it's only one being in all the universe that's the, that's the outshining of God's glory. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 1, and let's look at verses uh, 1, 2, and 3. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1, 2, and 3. Okay. Patrick, you can share that for us. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1, 2, and 3 mm -hmm. says... God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed the heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Now I want you to notice very carefully here that the Bible says that Jesus is the brightness of the Father's glory, Amen. the express image of his person. Mm. And so we're going to find that the earth is to be lightened with the glory of God or with the image of God being seen mm. in men. Look at, let's go to Colossians chapter 1, because the angel not only represents Jesus, mm -hmm. but the angel also represents God's people, Christians, who have the, who have the character of Jesus developed in their soul. Mm -hmm. Colossians. And who's going, to, who's going to be proclaiming this message? Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. It says, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, what is the, what, what met, does the gospel, is, what is, the, is the gospel the agency? I want to confirm, is the gospel the agency by which a, me, a, a, a message will come that talks about, that brings Christ as the hope of glory? Is the gospel that agency? Of course, the only agency, the only way that, or means that the Lord God has been given us for the salvation of the, of the human race okay. is the gospel. All right, well, let's, let's do two things. Let's see, because if it's going to be, if the, if the, if the earth is going to be lighted with the glory of God, mm -hmm. that means the earth must have the righteousness of God. The people must have the righteousness of Christ in their lives. Mm -hmm. All right, in order to do that, then let's take a look at two texts. Let's look at, Romans 1, 16. Let's look at Romans, I mean, Revelation 14, 6, first of all, to show well, that the well, angel... read it already at Re the beginning. Revelation 14, 6. Let's okay. go there first to show that the gospel, this mm -hmm. gospel, first of all, is the everlasting gospel. Mm -hmm. Revelation 14, 6. Mm -hmm. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel mm -hmm. to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. All right, this everlasting gospel, who, who, what, what is this everlasting gospel connected to? Go to Romans 1, 16 and 17. One. Romans 1, 16 and 17. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So Amen. notice notice very carefully, for therein what? Verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So notice here the everlasting gospel is the same gospel of Jesus Christ found in Romans 1, 16 and 17. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the everlasting gospel is the, in fact, the book of Revelation only mentions the everlasting gospel as, be, as the gospel of Christ in reality. Mm -hmm. Because that's the only, Revelation 14, 6 is the only place where you're going to find in the book of Revelation where the word everlasting gospel is mentioned. Mm -hmm. But that's 
uh, Romans shows that too, because it's the gospel first to the Jew, then to the, the, the Greek. The so Greek. So now why is the, the gospel of the Old Testament is the same as in the New Testament. It's the uh -huh. everlasting gospel that doesn't change. Now notice something very carefully. Paul said this gospel went to the Jew and to the Greek. So the Jew had the commandments, and in the Greek we get the commandments. The Jews had the Sabbath. The Gentiles would have the Sabbath. The seventh day Sabbath. The seventh day Sabbath. Okay. Okay, so I want you to see. And the Jews had the Lamb of God. And the Jews had a Lamb of God, and the Gentiles have a Lamb of Amen. God. All right, Amen. you with me now? The Amen. true Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. So yes. are you with me now? So this is so important to keep in mind. So now notice very carefully, though, this gospel has in what? The righteousness of God. But what is the purpose of the righteousness of God? What is the ultimate purpose of the gospel? Let's go to 2 Thessalonians 2.14. 2 Thessalonians 2.14. It says... Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. To attain to what? The glory. And glory here refers to character. character. But with character comes law. Because under the new covenant, God's law, when you're born again, God's law, God begins to, if you're seeking obedience to yield your life to God on a daily basis, you yield obedience unto righteousness. God's law, God's through the Holy Spirit, he begins to write the law in the heart. Yeah. Amen. All right? I mean, so therefore, uh, uh, Hebrew mm -hmm. 8, Hebrews 8, 8, 8, 8, 10 through 12 uh, talked about uh, that, right? All this ties in with the first angel's message fear God and, and give, give glory, glory to, to him. him, right? And when Moses asked him, I beseech thee, show me, my, show me thy glory, God revealed his character to Moses and his law. You say, well, where is the law? The law is in visiting iniquities of fathers to the third and fourth generation. If one part of the law is mentioned, the whole law stands. Amen. Okay, so I wanted to bring, bring, that, bring, bring that point to you. But now I want you to see one thing. The angel came down from heaven. Angel, the, we know the identity now of the angel is Jesus. Amen. And we also know that Jesus has a message because an angel can also mean a messenger or a minister. So far the message is coming through the everlasting gospel. Mm -hmm. And the ultimate purpose of the message is that you and I obtain to the glory of God. Why? Mm -hmm. Because this gospel of the kingdom, go to Matthew 24, 14. Somebody read that for me. How is the earth going to be lightened with his glory? What is, what is God going to do? Let's this, take a look at that. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. That sounds just, just like uh, the first angel's message. That's right. right. Notice very carefully. Now, Matthew 24, 15 tells us what will take place that will cause the gospel of kingdom to be accelerated. What is going to happen? What is going to be, what is, what is going to be seen in the world mm. that's going to have to cause God's people and all who are true to God and his word and his commandments to accelerate this message? Well, it says, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, I'm reading mm -hmm. Matthew 24, 24 15, 15 mm -hmm. spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, who read it, who readeth, let him understand. Who readeth, let him understand. Now notice, when you used to see what? The abomination of desolation. Before, before we go on, what is an abomination according to the Bible? The book of Ezekiel tells us about several abominations. Mm. Let's see what abomination is the greatest that would cause the attention of the whole world, but yet bring on the wrath of God. Mm. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, because... Ezekiel what? Ezekiel... Um, Eight. Uh, yeah. And let's look at verse, start verse 12 through 16. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's then talk about the hole in the wall. Then yeah. said he unto me, Son of man, thou hast seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark. Hast thou seen it, every man in the chambers of his imagery? For they say, The Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Now, what was greater than people worshiping Id idol images on the wall? Hmm. Now, that was, a, that was an abomination. But God said there's a greater abomination than this. So what is greater than that? Let's take a look. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Hmm. Women weeping for Tammuz, is a, it was the ancient teachings of Believing, uh, that, you know, it was dealing with immortality of the soul. Mm. It was believed that when you died in the ancient Babylonian, Egyptian, Babylonian pagan cultures, that when you die, you went to heaven. Right. But heaven was not the heaven where God is. It was believed that you died and went to heaven and you, and you became part of the 
realm of the, uh, your spirit help be part of the realm of the astrological chamber. Okay. The second heaven. And the second heaven where you would actually help, help, help in, in so-called the spirit form, you're supposed to be able to help guide the destiny of other people. Mm -hmm. This is where astrology comes in at. Right. This is where, this is Babylonian astrology. The Bible says that men die and know nothing. But they were teaching early on, the, ancients, the ancient Babylonian pagan customs were teaching that men died and that their spirit lived on after death. We know a body and a breath makes a living soul. We know that from our booklet called State of the Dead. Right, right, let me see. And so I want to make that clear because immortality of the soul is connected to the issue that, about the abomination. Yeah, yeah. And so the worship of idols is an abomination, oh. but also the worship of the dead, believing that you can talk to the dead, or believing that the dead can come back is also an abomination. Hmm. All right? So therefore, the Bible said that these are abominations that would be done, that were done by ancient Israel and be, be done in the church. Hmm. And so now we're seeing it in churches and we're also seeing it in the world at large. We even see people coming out with movies about people going to heaven or saying that they have talked to the dead. The Bible, the Bible condemns that we are not to go to necromancers, fortune tellers, mm -hmm. people who said they can, or uh, psychics who believe they can cross over and talk to the dead. Right. The Bible said all this was an abomination, and for this, Israel was punished and destroyed, many times allowed to be taken in captivity by other nations. That's true, that's true. So, so in this booklet, uh, we prove with the Bible that the dead know nothing, that there is no such a thing that anyone, nobody, can have communication with the so-called the soul of a person or the spirit of the death because the death know nothing. It's a spirit of the devil that making men and women believe that they are coming up. But you know what? Let's close today by saying this. My friends, there are many deceptions out there. But in the book of Revelation chapter 18, as we want to come back and, and take into that chapter, we will see that there will be a most glorious movement on this earth, maybe sooner than we might think. In the meantime, let's keep uh, us in prayer. We pray for all of you, and let's keep close to the Word of God. May God bless you all. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel, P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.